Yo, yo, what's poppin' everybody? A little bit of a different video today. I'm actually gonna show you the behind the scenes, reveal the curtains of a call that I had with my inner circle. So I have a one-to-one -one coaching program where I help content agencies, if you're one of them, how to scale, how to grow, how to become better businesses. And I did a call where we talked about mindset. So I went deep into different mindset protocols that I follow, some stuff about how I manage content, uh, little mental blocks that you might be having. My students got a lot of value from it. Hopefully you get a lot of value from it too. And if you're interested and want me to coach you one-to-one, -one, click the first link down below. That being said, let us begin. I think we got enough guys here. So you guys wanted me to cover like productivity, some mindset stuff. Uh, I have some stuff prepared. I don't know what everybody's knowledge of stuff is. So I'm just going to start with the basics and then we'll all move together. All right, actually, you know what? I'll start with this. Who, 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 say, who would say like they're, they're pretty good at time management? I was saying okay. All right, what do you guys do for time management? I normally just make time blocks and then I position the time blocks based on if like random shit comes up and then I can move stuff around. Okay, all right. And, and what happens if you don't finish? If I don't finish something, it gets pushed to the, the next day. Okay, decent, decent, decent. And what would you say? I would say I'm good because my priority when building a productivity system was flexibility because nice. I, I still live with a lot of family and stuff comes up all the time and it's came in clutch since i've i'm in texas right and i've been able to get stuff done just because i can move stuff around the the plans my my family wants to make wow nice bro i love that yeah so i track every day i uh, i've started doing the uh, the try um the clockify thing i've started oh yeah how do yeah, you find so it I, um it makes me feel shit <laughs> but um, yeah so i'm doing clockify i track every single thing i do and i set my tasks the day before i do it and okay. then i i do time blocks so 10 till 10 30 i'll get up and eat 10 30 till 12 i'll go to the gym etc and then uh i've also got a to-do list and then i've got an optional list like if i have time and the way that i select my tasks is I've started doing this recently, but every Saturday, I like, I think I put this in the chat, but I've decided every single thing that needs doing, and then I pick stuff out of that to do. Them. Okay, that's cool. So you plan a day ahead of time, and then how do you know what to prioritize? Well, I just figure out in my head, like, creating the VSL is more important than what font I'm going to use in my logo. Okay. Okay. What if you have two tasks that have similar weight? Importance? Can you give an example? Yeah, so say, you, uh, say you're like, okay, should I send cold emails or should I make some content? I would split it 50. I, well, I premeditated how much I'm going to do in the week and then I just get that done. So this day I'm going to do organic, this day I'm going to do cold email. Okay. I try and like allocate it so that I'm not doing cold email, then organic. And then DMs, like I'm just doing it in blocks, uh, as not as um, not said. Okay, sounds good. All right, cool. So you guys have slightly different systems, kind of similar ish. Um, okay, cool. What about everybody else here? Like, what has anybody here get like really anxious when they have like a bunch? And you feel like, oh, I got so much shit to do. And I, I, I just don't know where to start. You guys get that? Yeah, I mean, it depends on like. <clears throat> what's going on that week like usually i feel better after i've gotten a bunch done and i'm like okay i'm good and it just stacks up again you know that can that can happen from time to time yeah okay yeah usually usually when we get that kind of anxiety is because we don't have a, a clear exact step-by-step -step path that's what we need to mm -hmm. do and usually the best thing to do in that situation is just write down your highest leverage tasks and then choose the first three that you came up with because those are usually the tasks that you have to do right now mm -hmm. anybody here get um mm, i don't know a little bit lost sometimes they don't, they don't know exactly what to do that's been me yeah. since we started doing like content and emails i felt like well which one's more important and i felt like i had to like do a bunch and then i was like i just need to like relax and do a little bit of each and then it'll snowball okay well marcus you said yes yeah, yeah. It's uh, I think when I have nothing to, I when I have few things to do, I don't know where to start. I think it's something that really happened to me. 
and when you don't you feel a little bit lost yeah yeah, yeah. um like um yeah, yeah like i feel lost, like a uh, for uh, many things to do so i don't know what, don't know what stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay yeah so like as before when you, you get anxiety when you have too much shit you don't know what to prioritize when you feel lost is when you have no plan at all you don't really know and usually in that case is it's a, it's a case of okay let's 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 find out what there is for me to do what my goal is and then what the steps i'll need to follow together that helps me a lot just to start there what's up ian yo how you doing man good good what should what would you say your time management is like time management are you oh you're asking because i came late <laughs> no, that's not... What? Why would I? What? What makes you um, think that? Um, uh, no, I need to I definitely need to improve. Um, yeah, definitely. I'll just join now. I heard you saying about um, something about planning, having a goal and stuff. That's something that I need to work on definitely. Um, mm. one of the things, one of the challenges for me was obviously the grid uh, on my Instagram. Um. And I basically made like a, a challenge for myself to avoid the grid for like six months or until the end of the year and just yeah. post just post content. Like doesn't it doesn't have to be related to the agency or whatever, just stuff that I've filmed, just post it and just see what happens, including you know, paid work and unpaid work, whatever. For mm -hmm. or just stuff like that. So yeah, that's one thing that I'm trying out, but I think I think I need more goals and stuff. How Definitely. how long is that grid taking you? Uh, what do you mean? How long has it been taking you to figure out that whole grid thing? Uh, what well, as in posting on it or? Yeah, like just like figuring out how to how to post the grid. Like how long has it taken? It takes you to... time. Like it takes time because, yeah, it takes time. It it takes a lot of time. Uh, how long? I mean, I didn't post anything for months, basically, just because okay. I didn't have to post um okay yeah so what i'm getting at is um is it sounds like you you're working on this whole grid thing that was one of the first things you mentioned yeah but you don't know how long it's taken you to do it and we were sp speaking about this for like three four weeks from what i remember yeah but if you don't know how long something's been taking you you can have been doing a task that may not be as important as you think and it may be taking you a lot of time so i think william you said you did the clockify thing right yeah what made you feel shit about doing clockify because uh, I'm pretty bad at this anyway, but I set loads and loads of tasks and it is once in a blue moon, they all get done. And then when I look at Clockify, it's like, it normally take everything takes like, sometimes some things like twi take twice as long. And I'm like, that took me way too long. I probably could have done it in like half the time if I just like absolutely zoned in. Okay. <clears throat> so I think may maybe in, in some cases it's when you don't know how long you've worked on something you can't track that time so then you can't know oh shit i've been working on this thing it's not really that important but it's been taking me three four weeks what other stuff is important in my business that i need to really think about and then should be prioritizing those things and then for stuff like this like the grid and figuring out what you're going to do you can figure that out probably in like half an hour if you really gave yourself the time for it and then build a system around that like i'm going to post these videos with these photos for the grid you do it once and then when it comes to making the content you just post the grid afterwards so it really shouldn't be taking you that that long if that makes sense yeah makes sense yeah hmm. have you guys heard of something called parkinson's law i've heard you mentioned it i think before have i nice cool parkinson's <laughs> law is a is a the time it takes to finish a project expands for the amount of time you take it so if you say, um, oh, I got the whole morning, I'm just going to work on this video, right? It will take you the whole morning, maybe even more. But if you say, I have one hour to do it, you will figure out how to do it in an hour. You might cut some corners, you might not spend so much time on some shit. That's Parkinson's law. And uh, a lot of like Elon Musk's business works on the inverse. They, they just make things, they shrink tasks as short as possible and see how little time you can do it. And it works. If you just set a time and be like, okay, I have one hour. I'm going to do this thing in one hour and nothing more. Then you'll figure out how to do as much of it in one hour. We just give ourselves as creatives too much free time because we're used to doing that. Oh, I'll do this video. I'll take my time off. I'll, I'll get creative. It feels really good. But you can't apply that to all the other tasks that are actually going to take your business forward. It doesn't work.
Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. yeah. Anybody, here, anybody here baffled? <laughs> no, can I ask a question? Of course you can. Um, it's more of a question to help me like better, what is it, digest the information. It's, um, could you name where your understanding of an effective productivity system comes from? Do you have like books that you go to or just general research or trial and error? A lot of it is trial and error. I did read mm -hmm. a, a book called Essentialism a long time ago, which is about doing only the things that are essential to like to, to move forward. What What is the one task that I need to do right now? Because most oh, okay. of what, what we will do is we'll sit down We'll like look at some messages, look at some emails, some DMs on your phone, and you're kind of doing little bits and bobs here and there, but you never actually get things done. And when you have, an, when you have like I do, multiple clients, you have people on payroll, you have different team members, and you just spend your time replying to team members and doing all of this, in between doing work, nothing really gets done. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I set, that's why I did this whole weekend thing. I was like, I'm gonna just set a specific time to do these seven tasks that are high leverage. And I can't go on Slack. The world is not going to set on fire. But I was able to do all these tasks that would otherwise take me so long throughout the whole week. So there's a lot of trial and error. <clears throat> and I'll show you how I manage the content in a second. But does anybody, anybody here ever just get so, like, just, like, just don't feel motivated at all? Just lack motivation some days? No, of course, definitely. Yeah? Okay. I'm going to draw some stuff. Let's see how this goes. Let's see if this works. So... Uh, let me know if you guys can see my whiteboard. Oh, I don't think it's gonna work. Can you guys see my whiteboard? Not yet. No. no. Mm, it's I loading. Went your, I went to see your drawings. <laughs> <laughs> this might not work with this fucking table. It works on my Mac. Uh, let's see. If not, I have a backup. Oh, no? plan ahead. The pen and paper or? <laughs> no, I, I had I had everything drawn beforehand. Connect to Wi-Fi and connect to the same because tap screen. Ah, uh, screen mirroring. Nah, is that gonna work? Yeah, you, you're trying the iPad. Yeah, you can do screen mirror. Yes, sure. The PC. Oh my God. That's Bro. sick. You guys see that? Nope. Nope. I see a mouse cursor. Yeah. yeah oh, there, oh, I see a line. Oh, yeah, it's, but it's, it's in black. You have it in black. Yeah, it's a black screen. Black. Uh, yeah. No, it's white. not a whiteboard. It's a blackboard. Yeah, I can make it white if you really want. No, Richard. Oh, it's oh, a no, blackboard. Black. It's not a whiteboard. It's a, yeah, like, is that, is that okay? Or, yeah, or is yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. All right. Oh, shit. It's going to be fun. Okay. So, <laughs> when, uh, when, um, when you guys think of, of motivation, what do you guys think of? Let's put motivation here. Tony Robbins. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay, that's cool, Tony Robbins. So you think of somebody who will motivate you, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so motivation, let's do an arrow. We'll do motivating motivating speeches, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What else we got? I think about think. energy. Energy? Nice. Um, um, what word comes to mind is fleeting. What? Uh, Say again? The, for me, it's fleeting. Fleeting, like 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 leaving, like motivation leaving. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Elaborate. Mm. Motivation to me is like one of those high energy emotions that you feel it feels really good, and then it just kind of like leaves you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a high energy emotion that can leave you. Yeah. Based on your definition. Okay. Anybody else? That's me. For me, the feeling of a work done when you finish the working. That feeling. Okay, so you get motivated when you when you do something, and then like, like you've accomplished. No, something. no. When I think the the feeling of say okay, I finish like. Oh, you finish. Okay. Do, and it's finished. Okay. Well, so the gratification. Yeah. Kind yeah, of, well, yeah. Yeah. Maybe he maybe he feels it from from that. Well, that's a good thing, bro. After you've done it. That is yeah. true. Like after you get something done, you feel better. Like snowballing. Okay. So fleeting was an important thing. We'll, we'll tap into that one. So you guys think of motivation. You think of these things, right? You think of these things that give you motivation, right? Everybody had said something about how it gives you motivation, right? Okay. What does motivation always end up leaving, uh, taking you to? 
Depression. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what do you guys get motivated to do? Achieve my Work. goals and objectives. Yeah. Okay, achieve objectives. Yeah. Okay. Well, what's the what? What do you need to do to achieve an objective? What What's the What's the verb for that? Doing. Working. Doing. Doing. doing yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm I'm looking for a specific word like doing. What is it work? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I'm I'm just gonna. Say, oh. Oh. What hustling, bro? What do you want us to say? <laughs> oh, I need to. I just want you to say action. That's it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> right, you guys take. You want motivation to take action. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Right. You want to be. I want to be motivated to go to the gym. I want to be motivated to make these videos. I want to be motivated to make stories and get 100k uh, on Instagram. Right. Like you need. You guys are looking for motivation to take action. Correct. Now, what if I was to tell you guys that? Motivation is a very, very, very poor fuel. What do you guys feel about that? What is? I, I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it comes and goes like the wind. You need discipline. Bro. <laughs> I mean, what if you just don't feel motivated at all? Discipline you... and persistence. Sure. Well, you, I guess you kind of need motivation to be disciplined a little bit, can't you? Yeah, I would say habits though, because like, if you if you can like force yourself to do it a little bit when you don't want to, but at least take some of the momentum mm -hmm. to just get you started. Just if if you do happen to get motivation, take it and run with it for a second, and then just don't let it go. Mm -hmm. That momentum is strong, I think. So, okay, cool. I like that. I like that. That's good. So motivation is a weak fuel, as I mentioned before, and the reason it is a weak fuel is because motivation is all in your it's all in your head. Is this random battery that you have i'm really trying to draw here guys uh that gets filled up right from all these things that you guys consume right the uh, motivational videos like uh the feeling of, of accomplishing something uh, you see somebody on instagram doing something you're like oh i need to do it um you you have this imaginary bar that's going up and you're like cool this bar has has hit a certain limit and now i'm going to take action that's how most people operate with motivation, right? Now, there's another thing that most people feel in this process after they take action. Anybody know what they feel when they when they, when they start actually doing something? When they start, Is when it they start the drilling in? Yeah, I guess so. It depends <laughs> what you're doing, bro. <laughs> you're like, if you if you got motivated to jump off a cliff, you probably will feel adrenaline one hundred percent. So you guys, you guys mm. take cash. You guys decide to do something. What keeps you doing it? Mm. The reason okay. behind the realization. Yeah. Okay, the you reason. got you got you got reasons. Okay, you know why? I guess. You yeah. got why? Okay. Does that happen with everything? Like, if you go to the gym because you got motivated, you think, yeah, I'm doing. I have a why for this. Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah, you, set I you set a goal to go to the gym, and then you go. Yeah, I mean, I don't go to the gym unless I feel like I'm going to get better at, like, a sport, personally. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's You're cool. married to, bro. All right, are you? <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> what did you say? You said you're married. Are you so married? You're... Yeah, I'm married. Yeah, there you go, there you go. You don't need a... You don't need a... I lost all motivation. No, it's for me, bro. I got to get good sports. I like that. Gain for me. <laughs> it's just for me. Nobody. <laughs> Not for my Cam, wife. Cam, is it... Um, is the question what keeps you doing action or what comes after the action is done what comes after the action that done that keeps you carrying on there's a, there's a certain thing okay, that you like feel the goal you for me yeah is there a, like a certain emotion that you guys feel i'll paint, paint this picture you started an edit because you got finally motivated to edit and now you're like you're editing you're like cool and you're like oh what what if i add this sound effect here and i oh like i'm gonna add this uh, transition and then, oh, I've got this color grading thing I want to do. And, oh, I've got this sick idea I want to do things. What, what, what's, what's that called? Are you improving yourself? What? Yeah. Fun. Fun. Love. Happiness. <laughs> I love this stuff. It's called inspiration. Right? You get inspired. Mm -hmm. by what yeah, you're doing. that's it. Yeah. Fuck, inspired. My... So I'm, I'm dyslexic, if you guys didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know that. Could have fooled me. The... I can't even spell it. Uh, uh okay so inspiration you get inspired when you start taking action 
okay? You, you start a sport, you get inspired to try new things and, and mess about and whatever. Uh, you, you start to, I'm trying to think of whatever what other actions people do. Whatever, you, you start to make content, you get inspired by some, by some other stuff and you carry on, okay? So here's the cycle. You guys get motivated to take action and you get inspired and that helps you carry on and then kind of dies down and you lose motivation and then you cry and you get it back and you start again, right? It's a cycle. What if I was to tell you though, that the motivation, fuck, uh, action, fuck, this is terrible, hold on. <laughs> Bro, this was like me on my, uh, my final exam today. I was writing <laughs> hieroglyphics. <laughs> Bro, I'm just, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> hold on, hey, hey, you're good, man. Motivation. Bro, English English is your second language and your dyslexic, man. You you got a lot of passion. I'm trying hard, bro. I have to try hard my whole life. <laughs> okay. Boom. Okay, boom, boom, boom. What if I was to tell you that what is this? What if I was to tell you that it is actually a cycle. Okay? It's a cycle. So you get motivated, you take action, you get inspired, and you get more motivated, and you take action. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I told you motivation is a poor fuel, right? It's a battery that ends up depleting. Now, what if I was to tell you that because inspiration can let you get more motivated to carry on, you know, sometimes when you actually start editing a video, like somebody has to come and tell you to, to stop because you'd probably be there all night if you really wanted to, especially when you're doing something you really enjoy, right? Some of you guys have experienced that, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. That, to get into that, you guys think you need to start with motivation. You need to start right here. You don't actually have to do that. You can start anywhere in the cycle. You can start right here. You can just do the thing. You can just open up Premiere Pro and sit down and say, you know what? I'm going to do like five minutes of editing. And you can be like, oh, cool. I can add, I should add the sound effects here. Oh, this song is, this song is nice. Let me, let me add the, let me add the beats to it. Let me actually get, let me get, oh, I'm getting grooving. This is cool. I like it. Now I'm, now I'm, now I'm, I've been inspired. Now I'm motivated to carry on. And before you know it, you actually have entered the cycle and now it's hard to stop. So in many situations when you actually feel like you're lacking motivation, you're lacking this weak fuel, you can just, just take action. You can just do the thing and just say, lie to yourself. I promise you it works. Lie to yourself. So I'm going to just do this for a few minutes. I'm gonna half an hour and just sit down and do it. I don't, I don't want to do it. I really, I really don't want to do it. There's a lot of things when you run a, a, an agency to my size that you just don't want to do. I don't want to have to write all these, all these emails to these clients. I don't want to have to write sales letters. I don't want to have to do all this random admin stuff. I don't want to do it. But if I just sit down and say, okay, I'm going to just do a few minutes of it. Before you know it, I'm like, I'm like, what language should I use here? This would be cool. Let me, let me ask ChatGPT. And I'm like, okay, let, let's, let's change the tone here. I think this would be cool. Before you know it, you enter the cycle for every single thing you want to do. So that helps me a lot. I don't know if that helps some of you guys. Yeah. No, actually, I, I did a thing where when I wanted to be consistent with the gym, I mm -hmm. would go just to stretch. I tell myself, like, I'm just going to stretch for like 10 minutes, but I have to be in the gym to do it. Yep. And then I end up actually doing the workout. So I, I get that. Nice. I like that. That's cool, bro. That's it. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's another thing. If you can just, with someone who said discipline earlier, make it so that you, like this morning, I, I went boxing, 7 a.m. I had to wake up at 6. How shit is that? I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> I hate waking up so early. But I had my entire kit right next to my, my bed. So I just got up and I put it on. I had no choice. And I was like, oh, let me just go. And then on the, on the drive there, I was like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to try this thing I'm doing, whatever. whatever. So it, it, it's just a way for you to not have to rely on motivation. Because if you rely on motivation, you're relying on an external thing to help you get things done. And that's just not, not going to work long term. I do have a question real quick. So there is one in between part between action inspiration that sometimes I get stuck on. I'll take an action because I know that motivation is not there, right? Like, mm -hmm. like these cold emails, let's say, or something. Like I try to do those. And yep. then I kind of get lost in like, I go, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, let's say. And then I you start get roadblock. Like lack. I get, yeah, but it's like a, yeah, I hit a roadblock. And then I kind of like, it's tough because in some ways, sometimes I'll just freeze up. And then other times I'll just push through it, but I don't feel inspired necessarily. I just mm -hmm. push through it. And then I keep trying to push through it. And I kind of just keep hitting a wall, which I guess is just trying to do anything new. It's like challenging, but um, yep. I don't know. Like if I'm trying to keep this cycle going, is there a way to deal with that maybe? Yeah. But, so this is, um, this is something that you're doing that's new, something that's, uh, that's difficult. 
and you, you probably hit a roadblock because there's some unknown you're facing. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to say here. I don't know if this is good. I'm judging myself. And then that's going to make you feel less inspired. Because mm-hmm. now the other side of you that's maybe thinking, oh, is this even going to be good? Like, that's, that's what's speaking to you right now. Exactly. So in that, in, that, in that situation, I think, I think what I do is I would just find knowledge that's going to help me get inspired again. So you can go on the course, you can Google, you can, you can see, okay, but what, what's a good cold email strategy, even someone that's not me, and True. you might get inspired by somebody else. That's what I do all the time. Especially okay. when it's like an edit. I'm like, oh, this looks shit. Let me look at other people's edits. Let me get inspired by other people's edits. Mm. So I, I think finding external inspiration is better than finding external motivation. Gotcha. Because okay. inspiration, you can replicate. You can be like, cool, that inspires me. I'm going to try this. Motivation is I need to see something and have a feeling to then take action. See the difference? Yeah. And it's still, even that's challenging because you have to have the discipline to go on social media, specifically look for a thing and then get off social media. And then get distracted, yeah. Um, I'm learning that too, but yeah. Yeah, 100%. Cool. All right, was that useful or was that just absolute rubbish? For me, it was useful. That was good. Well, that was very useful. All right. Okay. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is something called the, the, the Dunning, ugh, the Dunning Kruger effect. Anybody heard about it? Yeah. No. Okay. This is going to be, this is, this is sick. This changed my mind about everything. Let me, uh, why did I turn this off? The Dunning Kruger effect. Okay. So everybody experiences this. In fact, Cody, this is going to ho- hopefully answer your, your question. Perfect. Okay. So, Dunning-Kruger effect. I'm not using cheat notes. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to do a graph right here. At the bottom is competence. Who knows what competence is? Ability? Yeah. Yeah. Ability. Yeah. And right here, confidence. Who knows what that is? Confidence. Yeah. It's your belief in your ability to do something. Correct. Five points to the golf club owner. (laughs) Okay. So there's a graph called the Dunning-Kruger effect. And it goes like this. When you start something, your confidence goes up the more you learn about something, the more competent you get. Okay. You guys see this? See my graph? I love graphs. When you start like a, I don't know, like a, a new, a new skill, someone give me a random skill you've recently learned, which you started taking up. Editing. Uh, color grading. Color grading. Yeah, cool. color grading. You start color grading. You get, you get a bit good at color grading. You finally learn how to do some, some simple masks. You start to like learn how to change the colors a little bit. It's starting to look more cinema- cinematic, more contrasty. So you, you get, you get quite confident with it. I imagine once you start actually doing it. Anybody here experience being a bit more confident with a new skill? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Then what happens? What happens is the more you learn about a skill, the more you realize how much you don't know about a skill. Yeah. Yeah. The deeper you get into a skill, the more you go, holy shit. Okay. I can color grade, mm-hmm. but I couldn't color grade like a, like a whole cinematic movie. There's all these masks that you got to do and all these, like, like there's all these levels and all these tones and, if I go to Da Vinci, I have to use all of these flow chart looking things. So what happens is the more you are competent at something, the lower your confidence gets. So you get really low. So that comes, that comes in business a lot. The more you know that, oh, I need to be sending a big traffic of cold emails. I need to be making a lot of content. I need to be doing this, this, and then have to learn about sales. And then I have to keep doing that. And I have to fulfill for the client. And then I have to keep doing this and consistently. You're going to lose a lot of confidence the more competence you get. And you kind of you kind of hang around here for a bit. You just check my graph. I mean, let me just, um, okay. And you kind of hang around here for a bit. And then you hang around here long enough, you actually get your confidence back up as you get more confident again. All right, and these, they have different stages. All these are different stages, right? This stage here at the beginning is called uninformed optimism. Uninformed optimism because you're really optimistic about this new thing you've learned but you're uninformed as to what's ahead as to all the other things 
Who here can can think of a, a time they've 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 started something and felt super optimistic and like they were gonna be good at it? Skateboarding. <laughs> when they open After Effects. <laughs> Bro, same. Literally same. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you well, open up After Effects. Yeah, you open up After Effects. You're like, oh, this is cool. Like, I can do all these effects now. I know some of the tools. You know, I'm like uninformed optimism. And then you experience something called informed pessimism. All right. Because you're so, you know, now you know about what the capabilities of After Effects are and how little you know. Probably. You probably look at these animations that some, guy, some guys do and you're like, how? <laughs> and this is with After Effects. And I can only do, I can just do speed ramps because I watched Camilla's course, right? And then you get to the bottom. This right here is called Crisis of Meaning. Crisis of Meaning, right? which is where you kind of have to make a decision to either crash and burn where you just go, you know what? I'm never going to, I'm never going to be as good. I'm just going to forget it. I'm going to, I'm going to stop this business thing. I'm going to quit doing this. This there's, there's too much to do. There's too much on the other side of this for me to continue. There's no, there's no point. So you just crash and burn, crash and burn. Okay. But then, if you continue and you keep learning, you get to a point called informed optimism. Informed optimism. So I experienced all of this like five times this year. So my agency got to a point where I was like, holy shit, okay, we're doing pretty good. But for me to get to another stage, for me to actually scale more, I need to hire more talent. So I need to learn how to hire talent. I need to create onboarding docs for talent. I need to test talent I had to interview these people there's all these things i'm like holy shit that's a lot okay and then once i get the talent, and i have money coming out that i need to now find these clients i need to go and get like turn back my emails keep getting clients and then i gotta find out whether these this new talent will fulfill for these clients so i'm seeing all this shit i'm like holy like that's a lot right so i was i was here i was here for like three months right there and then once you actually stick through it and get more competent. So this gap here, between here and here is competence. You actually take more information, you learn more about it, you ask some people that are doing the same thing. You realize, oh, it actually is possible. It just takes these, these, these steps. It's just gonna, it's gonna take some time. And now I'm more optimistic about the future of it because now I've hired two people. Now I can see them potentially fulfilling for the clients. I can see it actually working. So if I do get a client, I can rely on them. So now I'm on track to, experiencing this right here does that make sense to everybody yeah does this yeah. help anybody or is this absolute yap no that makes very helpful very helpful it's useful bro when yeah. i um oh shit but yeah when i hopped on a call with arnold he like showed me all of this color grading stuff mm -hmm. i just felt completely useless afterwards but since that i've been working on it every day so mm -hmm. um it definitely helped me to improve nice I love that. That's pretty cool. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, I normally hear that as Valley of Despair. So that's the first time I've heard it as Crisis of Meaning. Yeah, Valley pretty of cool. Despair. That's what some people call it as well. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. That's a good one. Sick. Cool. Hmm. All right. So I've got other stuff, but has anybody got any, any, anything with mindset that they want to know about? sick so everyone's mindset is, is perfect right everyone's got the best mind everyone's like super locked in <laughs> what do you do when, Pam, huh? when you really don't feel like doing something like you feel a little bit maybe you don't feel 100 percent, and uh you don't have anything on on the day so you don't actually have to do anything what makes you want to do it Uh, if I don't have anything in the day to do, so I don't have any tasks to do. You don't, you don't really have, you, there's no like deadlines coming up. You you maybe you don't feel a hundred percent, but you know that you should be working. Okay. So someone will know if you don't work, but you will know. So knowing that you should be working, 
that right there is the, is the key thing. I should be working. That's an emotion that you're feeling. What emotion is that? Yo. Okay. Anybody know about, oh, this is going to get so weird. Anybody know about like frequencies, wave frequencies? It's going to get really, this is going to get. I can get with that. You're, you're okay. Shame and guilt is the lowest, I'm pretty sure. It's above shame. Yeah. And shame is the lowest. So if you're feeling guilt, oh. what, 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 what does guilt, what does being guilty always remind you of? What, what, what is that the feeling of if you were to describe guilt? Hmm. When do you feel guilty in life? Like disappointed in yourself. Okay. Because in time, I know that I could be doing better. Like, Okay. Some like you know, like ignorance is bliss kind of. So if you know you could do better, then that's when you should do better kind of. Okay, so you, thinking you can be better means that you are currently not what good enough or whatever. Right? Yeah. Boom. I Guilty. Do Guilty is the feeling of not being good enough. Also, when you do something wrong, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're operating from a place of I'm not good enough, then if you're take some time to chill then the guilt will pop up be like yo you need to do some shit i'm like okay 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 yeah like, no wait you can't chill <laughs> you're not good enough bro you need to do some shit you need to actually do some work so because you're only operating and you're only doing work from a place of guilt you will never feel actual peace whereas if you're doing if you're doing if you're doing anybody here anybody here being in love yeah <laughs> Oh, you okay. never asked. Okay, so Cody's Cody's face <laughs> lit up. Mark was like, "Yeah, of course." What the fuck? Of course. Look at me. I'm Latino, man. <laughs> I'm Latino, man. I love everything. <laughs> I love everything. <laughs> okay, so, uh, Marcos, you've been in love. Yeah. Do you? Would you? When you're feeling in love, do you feel like you you can you want to just show up and be the best person for this person? Yeah, of course. Okay. And that came from a place not from guilt, right? You just wanted to be the best. No, it came from a positive place. Okay. So it came from a place of actually, you know, I want to do this. It feels good. You won't, you won't even feel guilty. You don't think, oh, I'm not good enough. And you probably like, became the best version of yourself. Same with you, Cody. You're going to be a father. Yep. How do you want to show up for your kid? Oh yeah, your mindset changes. Okay, well, uh, what is wrong with William, bro? Why are you worried? Hurry on. He's in Mexico now. <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> um, but yeah, it it changes your whole perspective. Like honestly, guys, like getting married is is a huge step where you're like, I gotta like take care of this. You know what I mean? And then having a kid, I haven't even had the kid yet, and I'm fully like. I need to figure this stuff out and it's, you know, it's not all about me and just being like, it's not just money. Like that's like a smaller aspect. It's like, what do they watch me do? Like, who am I? You know what I mean? And like, it changes your whole perspective, but anyway. Yeah. So you you operate from a completely different, different point of view. And yeah. so if you ever, if you ever have some, some chill time with your kid or with your wife, you probably won't feel like, Oh, I need to, I need to, I need to be, I need to be great. No, you just feel, good you feel chill yeah yeah all right and if you want to actually make an effort you do it out of a place of love not a place of guilt mm -hmm. so william you're asking me when when i when i'm chilling and i have not much to do how do i when i know i have something to do i just do it because i'm not coming from a place of of guilty being guilty i used to like last year i was like fuck i need to retire my parents i need to make this, this thing and i feel guilty because they made this massive sacrifice to come from the uk a uh, kilometer uk and then I was like, I shouldn't feel guilty about this. They made a choice and I'm, I'm just inspired by their massive actions and I should just use that and the love I have for them to drive me. And that, and then that doesn't become a, like, such a negative thing. Like I need to grind, I need to be, oh, I need to be so fucking good. Right? Yeah, bro, that's, that's basically me. That's why I like, I'm always, always doing something. It's from, I want to be, it sounds like a really bad thing. But I want to be better than I want to be better than everyone else my age, and that's like probably a narcissistic thing to say, but it's just how it is. 
Okay. No, especially at your age, that's like, really normal, I think. Yeah, and like every way I want to be better, then I'll be un then I'll be undeniable and then everyone will love me, right? But that's not that's not true. Bro, think about it. You're you're in you're in a, a, a room full of other people who are achieving things at different levels that at, at my age, at your age, I was I was even close to. You're already mm -hmm. top one percent of people your age. So I think I think the, the the problem might be you don't have an exact north star, an exact thing that's pulling you towards something that isn't I need to be better than other people. Because that comes from an, another place, which is desire. And desire is also not a very good frequency. Because desire is just a contract you're making with yourself that you're not gonna be happy until you get something. Someone write write that down, please. It's from Naval. No, for real. <laughs> that's something that I've been learning. <laughs> For real, well, like I'm like 10 years ahead of you and it's like the things that like you you kind of have to decide like when <laughs> when you're done you know what I mean because you'll just go forever you know you'll make a million dollars and whatever like I haven't done that but I'm just saying like you see all this stuff on Instagram I'm just saying like it, it'll go forever you know what I mean like you'll always compare to the next and the next so I'm still Sorry. struggling with that. I don't know how to deal with it but yeah yeah but I think everybody here should have a have a, have a North Star Mine used to be retire my parents. Then I was like, okay, because because that is such a thing that came from guilt. It's now, oh, I want to help as many video creators start a business and help their families. Because that's such a big goal that I have to expand to be bigger than myself. Whereas if I say I, I want to retire my parents, I'll only limit to how much it's going to cost to get them the house. Whereas if I try and stretch myself further i'll probably retire my parents but then i'll also try and help as many video creators as possible cool now the next thing i wanted to cover is kind of boring it's like systems and shit but i don't know if you want to go into that after this that's been really helpful for me lately like the stuff you taught me about systems, so we should do it okay okay cool so i'm gonna go through a, a who who here has a content management system kind of no growing I got one. I don't know. You sent it. You <laughs> literally make content every day. And you don't have a content <laughs> system. You're killing me. Explain. How how do you do this? I every day I don't know what to post. So I improvise. <laughs> I improvise okay. every day. I because if I know sometimes I know what I'm gonna talk or maybe mm -hmm. I have an idea of tomorrow. But mm -hmm. I don't like to be so structured because if not, I feel I feel like into a monotone like kind of content all mm -hmm. the time. So in that way, like it keep me fresh and I start creating like new stuff. And maybe this day this and another day this one. You know? Nice. I love that. So uh, of course I have like a method to create the content and to make something, but most of the time it's really fast and I create like a really in 10 minutes maximum nice that's sick yeah because your content is very you, you, what was that cody i feel similar to that with like making content for shark ranch it does well it's like most of the stuff that does well i didn't think about it for a week and then make this perfect thing it's literally like you just kind of like feel what's working in that moment so that's that's interesting mm -hmm. yeah from vicente too I like that. yeah i think with i think with uh with content like short form i think sometimes you just gotta jump in a trend and go for it yeah, of but, course, it's different for you, for example, that you create like longer YouTube videos, and of course, you need an instructor and some and like the entire idea to create tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. For me, yeah. real is like super easy and super fast. It's, it's not. I I don't need like such a strong structure to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To have do you think Do you think that's sustainable? Uh, probably until certain moment, maybe not. Yeah. What would, what would that moment be? Maybe when I have like to do like when I have like a full schedule, I have something I cannot improvise in that moment. Maybe you know mm. I have to like really uh, figure the thing out before. Um, yeah, yeah. But at the moment I have time, you know. <laughs> so yeah, if you have time for it, then by all means, <laughs> yeah. that's that's sick. For other guys, other regular human beings that don't have time, having a good <laughs> content management system is very helpful. Nox, you have I, one. Actually, yeah, actually, I made the content management system because I hit that moment where winging it just could, it was not sustainable anymore. Okay, break that down for us. Like, yeah, I make roughly like 70 pieces of content per month, 
since it's two accounts and then working on my personal stuff. Mm -hmm. And now <clears throat> with the content management system, I batch out like 30 pieces of content within a weekend. Okay. And so yeah, I used to be very strict with the whole like, I can't make good content if it doesn't come from impulse. Mm -hmm. But over time, I feel like it's like a, a whole nother skill to make content for the long term or for like 10 days from now. Mm hmm. I like that. I like that. And I think that's very important because you can have both. At the center, yeah. you can have some videos that you just plan out ahead of time. You're like, cool, these are like core videos I want to do, maybe like a little bit more scripted. And then you can have those come out every single every other day or whatever. You post like 1700 times a minute. So, but you would have that. And then you have the random ones that are like on the spot, off the cuff, a bit more natural. Those can probably also go viral. But now be able you probably be able to double your output by having a system in place. If that makes sense. Without without hindering your ability to be flexible and be creative. Right. Yeah. So I'll go through how I run it for two different uh, offers. So the biggest one, which is quite overwhelming, is the one for our agency client. Right now, there's not that many videos here, but usually there's. Uh, if I just switch it to checked, there's there's like usually hundreds. It's like 220 from the last month, so last two months. So um, it, it looks more complicated, but it's quite simple. It just follows this process here, which is we plan a video, which is, then it goes into scripting and ready for edit, then in review, then any comments internally. If there are, then they get addressed and it uploads the frame. Uh, and these are just statuses. What's read is a status. So it's, it's this status here. Uh, sorry, this status here. Right? And this allows us to actually be able to know at what step of the process each video is. Because for us, is when we put it on a board, we can be like, okay, cool. There's a lot of videos here ready for planning. And there's all these videos here ready for edit. So why are they not being edited right now? What's, what's the bottleneck? Have they not been assigned to somebody? Is something missing? Is some information missing? Whatever. And without that, then we, we don't really know what's going on. If we're just kind of thinking, oh, random video here, there, whatever, or free messages, then for, for, for when we have deadlines and we have loads of output, it's going to be a complete mess. So this, this is the, the workflow of it. It's, it's actually not very complicated, but it just follows these steps. And each person that's responsible for the video at the stage changes the status. So for example, if I was the copywriter, I would change it from uh, script writing to ready to edit. And then, and then the editor takes over. And then what we do inside here is because we have different products, we have all these products for our clients. We would script a video here and then the editor will edit it and put it in here. And then we'll do an internal review of it. And then the my assistant and she'll upload it to frame.io, send the comments to the, uh, send, send the link to the client and then the client will bring back comments. So it'll look something like this. So videos here, videos here, videos here. And then we'll have a frame link. And then the editor just does it. But then what we have as well is we have uh, some Slack systems where if somebody comments that the client comments on on frame, it sends a message to Slack telling us what the comment is, so the editor knows when the comments are being done. So I don't have to communicate with with, with the editor and anything. Nobody has to. Client makes a comment, editor knows, that's it. And the only thing we get like what we're trying to do here a lot is just minimize how much communication needs to happen between editors and and the and the client. Does that make sense or did I lose people? I probably lost people. No, you know, it sounds good, bro. Get it. All right, so this is a very, very complicated one. This is, this is uh, it's a long thing, right? Is but this, a simple. Is, um, is this something that you teach as well? Yeah, it's, I think I covered it in a module. Um, but the one I give you is this one. This is a simplified one. You don't have to have a, such a complicated one. So this one we use for a, a boxing gym. Uh, very simple to do. Editing, internal check, internal review done. And then uh, we we just basically create create the videos here. Uh, it kind of looks like this. 
we have a description references uh review the guy the guy the, like we, we just send this to him and he, he has access to our notion so then he just sees it and then this that's pretty simple so a very very much more simplified version of this looks like that and then we also have the folders so the google drive folders i have a zapier that when i get a new client and they pay when the stripe link comes in it takes the name of the of the business and it creates a new google drive folder and it makes all these google drive folders underneath that so it's it's like a one-time thing it just saves us so much time hmm. cool is that useful anybody want this link so they can use it no i'm just thinking um when you're producing all the content does your client have access to like actually know where their content is at or you do you just give them like an ETA and then they just have to wait or is there like consistent like they could log on and see that two videos are being reviewed internally and then they'll get to see it only this client does the the biggest client that we have this one no they don't need to they don't need, they don't need to know that this is our business um there's this need the video done that's it we're yeah. telling them if there's like a debt uh sorry if there's a, a delay or something but they just set the deadlines for the content and we just deliver for them that's it and this is how I use for my content. So I have a content planner. It looks like this. So similar thing, just uh, same, same, but different. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, I'll, I'll, I'll plan the videos here. So, some of them aren't overly planned. I'm doing also a lot of ones that are just kind of like shot on the phone recently. So yeah, I just do these here. And then I have my assistant, she uploads them to Instagram or to TikTok or whatever. And if I have a many chat sequence, she makes them. So yeah. Any questions? What's many chat? Many chat is uh, this automation software that if you say something like, oh, DM me the word freebie. Oh, okay. Then it, on the DM of freebie. So something like, like car. This is a complicated one. So they DM the word whip and then I, a message sends, hey, you want the project? They say yes. They type the email and then, uh, and then it sends it to them. And then now I collect the emails. So I've collected 410 emails from just one uh, many chat. Can you um, use this for like giveaways as well? Yeah, yeah. So I, you can use it for free one, free giveaways. So... But like if, if they comment on something, so if they, so if they comment, then you will send a DM. So you can be like, Hey, if you want to, if you want to join the giveaway, comment giveaway, and then you probably, I don't know, log them into something. So the many chat, the many chat can do so many things. Like it can, it can add somebody to a, to a document, to a list, log them or whatever. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Awesome. I was looking for something like that for my work. So that's cool. hundred percent. This is great. I, I, you can use it to ask questions. Right. That's really good. It's a good way to track. And actually you can use it with WhatsApp too. Yeah. I haven't used it with WhatsApp, have you? Yeah, mm -hmm. I have tried. Yeah? Was yeah. it good? But I'm not using it, but I have tried. It. Yeah. Yeah. You can you can also use it for appointment settings. So I have an appointment setter now because I'm getting too many DMs. And he would go and answer messages when someone says, Oh, like like to start a conversation um cook. but yeah cook <laughs> cook what what's this <laughs> i don't know bro i get the i get the maddest emails uh messages who's this guy famous user. i get the mad like some some guys are just like I don't know. Well, I there are the, some I people get... that they are just come to annoy you, you know. <laughs> just it's, not, it's not a joke. Things. It's not a joke. It's true. It's true. You sent a nose. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Was that was that useful to everybody? I kind of yeah, yapped. Man. Yeah. Very yeah. Nice. That was good. If you could send through um, a blank slate of that of your personal content, um, organizer, that would be really valuable. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Please. I'll do that for you. I only I only do it for you. That's it. Hey. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I am a free man as of today, so appreciate it. Nice. Did you get your results done or back? Yeah, no, no. I've got my results, but I finished. Oh, up. sweet. What'd you get? 
No, I haven't got my results. Oh, 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 I was um, writing at 10 30 this morning, just yapping away. <laughs> but you're done, bro. That's yeah, awesome. yeah, I'm finished. Now you just got to do 75 <laughs> hard. Bro, I am currently doing 75 hard. And it is really difficult. Yeah. I'm on day four now. And uh, for the diet, I'm not eating any sugar, like, at all. Like, I'll eat fruit, but I won't eat ice cream. I won't eat dessert. And, bro, we had a family meeting. There's two desserts in the fridge. And whenever I open it, it's at eye level. I've been fighting oh. that even off. I've been fighting it, bro, with all my might. Oh. That shit is hard. <laughs> I didn't realize how addicted I am to sugar. But, like, bro, I genuinely crave for it, like, 24-7. Yeah. Well, here, here's, here's a quick yap about willpower. So. What you're doing right now is you, you have you have a lot of willpower right now. Like the willpower not to actually like go into it and eat that stuff. Willpower is also a terrible fuel. It will run out. Just like motivation. It'll it'll run out at some point. If you ever tried to quit something and you went back to it afterwards, because you run out of willpower. What's the best way to to not have to use willpower? Like just throw away all the sugary shit. Okay. <laughs> Just get no, rid of it. Don't do it. Well, not doing is the willpower, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I guess remove it, it from your environment, like... so it's not a choice. Yeah. There you go. Someone said it. Who said it? Who said the e word? What? Will we'll we'll say it. Yeah. Environment. We'll... Exactly. Say if they, you do if you don't want to if you want to quit snacks, get snacks off your off your fucking house. If you don't want to like watch weird stuff online then put a blocker so you don't actually see that shit alright guys right. have a good rest of your nice. week you too. Let me know. Right. nice Peace. week guys